wait for edit. How we doing, Paul? <clears throat> okay. <laughs> What's going on guys? Matt with Blue Tail Survival. Uh, we are finally here. I finally get to do uh, some, some video footage for this uh, knife showdown that we did an intro for a few weeks back. Uh, some things have changed. I'm doing two brackets now. We're doing a bushcraft bracket and a survival knife bracket for the simple fact that there is just way too big size comparison or uh, size differential on a knife like this size versus uh, you know, like the Becker BK9 or something like that. That simply isn't gonna compare. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a bushcraft bra uh, bracket and a uh, survival knife bracket. Uh, none of the rules are changing really. Um, it's still gonna be a head-to-head -head thing until we eliminate, you know, until we eliminate all the knives and only have one left standing. Um, for the bushcraft bracket, which we are starting today, this will be episode one. Um, there are a couple things that like I'm taking into consideration when doing this film. So with say a survival knife, like a large chopper or something like that, it doesn't necessarily need to be accompanied with a saw or an ax or a fro or something like that. Um, kind of in my head with bu uh, going along with bushcraft is you're gonna, you, you generally are gonna have more tools than you would with, a, you know, if you're trying to test a survival knife. Survival knife is kind of like a one tool option. Bushcraft, you know, that you'd have something to help you process the wood down. Um, so basically nothing is going to eliminate any knife. Um, I'll just give you a quick example here. This is the Ontario Rat 3. Um, this is a coated blade, so it's not going to strike a ferro rod very well, and it's not going to throw sparks off a piece of chert or a piece of flint or anything like that. So it's probably going to fail in fire making, but I don't want that to <clears throat> uh, necessarily eliminate it because it is bushcraft and you are likely to have, you know, uh, strikers and things like that with you. So, um, without further ado, we're going to dive right into this, and I'm going to introduce the uh, first two knives in episode one. All right, so I probably have somewhere around 10 or 15 knives. I can't, I, I didn't really count, and the the way I put them head to head was a complete random drawing. I didn't, I didn't film any of that. I just, I did it this morning real quick. Um, the first two knives going head to head with with each other is the Ontario Rat Three. This is the Cabela's uh, exclusive, and the Tops Backpacker Bowie. All right, um, I do have some notes here, uh, so I'm gonna be referencing that. Somebody once said on a comment that uh, I review the notes too much because I'm not a natural uh, reviewer. I didn't know that was something you were born with. Um, but this is the, uh, the Topps Backpacker Bowie. All right, it's got a four and a half inch blade. It is 1095 high carbon steel. And I'm not super savvy on this right now, but I'm relatively certain this is a saber grind. All right, and I actually purchased this knife specifically. I mean, I like it, and uh, you know, it's it's getting a little bit of use. But this is the Topps Backpackers Bowie. I did kind of just buy this for this review, or uh, for this little uh, this little competition we're doing here. Um, so it's got a four and a half inch blade. It is 1095 high carbon steel. Relatively certain that that is a saber grind. It's got green canvas micarta handles, um, and from Amazon, this comes in at 104 dollars and 99 cents. Uh, kind of initial impressions on this one. It's got a really short, stubby handle. And if you uh, prepared mine, one one does a pretty good review on this one. He kind of talks about this is like, I can't remember what he said, but it's like the, the end-all be-all of ergonomics or something like that. And it is super comfortable. There's nothing stopping your hand from sliding off the back with the, with the exception of like these, these choils or these grooves. But it's super comfortable. And I have medium-sized hands. Um, it might get a little bit awkward with larger hands or uh, thicker gloves, but you know, whatever. You do have some uh, jimping at the top here, and you got this little notch, and I, I really think this is the only way they can tie this to backpacking, is, is what that is designed for is to pull your pot off the fire. Um, it is marketed as a lightweight buoy, but realistically, I mean, it's when I, when I first ordered this, I thought it was gonna be super light and super thin. I guess I should have put the thickness of these on there. I don't have that. Um, but yeah, that's the uh, Topps Backpackers buoy. It's kind of got a tumble finish. Uh, going on the spine here, I'm not sure how well that's gonna strike a ferro rod, but being that it is high carbon steel, it should be able to get some sparks thrown off of uh, off the rock. Uh, going head to head with the Ontario Knife Company uh, Rat 3. This is the Cabela's exclusive. And this is a three and three quarter inch blade, uh, 1075 high carbon steel, completely flat grind, laminated hardwood handles, uh, $59.99 uh, from Cabela's. 
Um, it, it's super comfortable knife. It's got a very, very small handle, but it, th this knife just feels really good in my hand. Uh, again, it's got jimping on the top, kind of like a really, really small drop point. You've got a bit of a choil up front here if you want to get into more detailed work. Um, the, uh, the original uh, Rat 3 or any of the Rats really, they come with canvas micarta if you, you, know, if you, buy, direct from, if you buy them from Amazon or whatever. Uh, but I did like this kind of rosewood color here. Um, I don't really care about the sheaths very much. That's not a factor for me, but the uh, Backpackers buoy comes with the Kydex sheath and the, uh, the Ontario comes with a pr pretty nice looking leather sheath as far as I'm concerned. Um, so those are kind of the initial impressions on both of these knives. Uh, if I had to pick one to win right out of the gate, I would say it's probably going to be the, uh, the tops just because I like 1095 more than I like 1075. Um, but yeah, we're going to head out to the uh, Victor Charlie Proving Grounds and we're going to go put these through their paces. Okay, so there's really only going to be, there's, there's two little tests we're going to do right now. We're going to do feather sticks. That's not true. I'm sorry. We're going to do feather sticks. We're going to try to light a fire from a feather stick. We're going to try to light a fire with uh, flint and steel if it can't do it with a feather stick. And then we are going to do some tent stakes. I did uh, make a fire board for a bow drill, but I just realized like I don't even have a bow drill set up. So for this specific episode, we're not going to do that. But I feel like with the tent stake specifically, um, I'll be able to tell you what uh, what you know what I think, which one's more comfortable, um, and which one handles better uh, and performs better while processing wood. All right, guys, here we go. Um, just so you guys know right out of the gate, I've never been great at making uh, feather sticks, and it's probably been about a year since I've done it, so this might be a little bit painful for both of us. Uh, but here we go, Ontario Rat 3, flat grind, 1095, high carbon steel, uh, powder coated blade, feather stick attempt number one. So I will tell you this, um, and I've experienced this before in the past, uh, these, the, uh, the full flat grind, for whatever reason for me, it either bites too much or not enough, but I can never ever really just get like a super fine curl. Um, but, uh, I mean, those are definitely sufficient. Those should get it, you know, if you could strike a spark onto that, th those should be good. But uh, uh, <clears throat> I don't know, I felt like I was putting a lot of pressure, probably didn't need to, getting a little bit of hot spot on the back of my thumb here. Um, but we will see how that does if this even strikes a ferro rod. It may be a non factor, but I do think that these curls would be completely sufficient uh, to. Matter of fact, whether we can do it or not, we will test it uh, with a striker to see if we can get those lit. But those look, I mean, they look fine enough for me. So that's the Rat 5 on the Feather Stick. All right, let's see how the uh, Topps Backpacker buoy does with Feather Sticking. Find a good angle here. Woo! <laughs> that one felt really good. So as you saw the, uh, oh yeah, man, this is, this is significantly different, which is funny because, I mean, a saber grind, which is what I'm pretty sure the backpacker buoy is essentially, is just a flat grind, right? That starts lower on the, uh, like lower down on the blade. Uh, but this one is significantly, oh man, significantly easier. And I feel like I'm, and it's all the same wood. It all came from the same piece of wood. But damn, man, that's like, it's it's really, really easy for me. Uh, the, the backpacker's buoy definitely gets the nod as far as feather sticks, as far as I'm concerned, or concerned. Because that, that was super, super easy. Almost felt like I was going through clay. All right, here's the uh, fire steel test. Like I said, I, I doubt this one's gonna... All right, well, we'll see here. Um... <laughs> I 
Use a big dummy. Are you gonna kill yourself? That is fucking awesome. Okay, well, I scraped off a little bit of the coating and I did get myself pretty good. Uh, day drinking definitely probably plays a role in that. <clears throat> but, uh, hold on one second, let me wipe some of this off here. Uh, now that I got a little bit of the coating off, which would just happen anyways naturally. We'll see if I can get, see if I can do this again. Okay. I'm calling the rat three a kind of a fail at that. Uh, just because, I mean, it is super, super difficult. I'm pushing super hard and you can see I, I got myself pretty good here. Um, so the rat three, it cannot get a feather stick lit. That's, that's what I'm going to go with. All right. Well, pretty interesting here. Neither one of these will strike a ferro rod very well. Obviously that one does not at all. Um, we do need, uh, I don't have a striker here with me, so I'm going to have to, I think I might have to use another knife to test the feather sticks of both of these, but neither one of them will strike a ferro rod. Okay, well, we're going to abuse a Leatherman here. Uh, we're going to use a serrated blade because historically that actually has worked really well for me. We're not going to get too crazy with this because I can't stop bleeding. I'm too lazy to go get a band-aid. So uh, here we go. This is the feather stick that the uh, Rat 3 uh, produced. Two hours later. It, uh, the ferro rod itself is not very good. I knew the feathers weren't very good. And they're just, I could probably do this for a while. They're, they're just really not catching. So I think we're probably going to call it quits on this one. All right, moving on now to the Backpacker's buoy Feather Stick. We'll see how this one goes. I haven't messed with this one at all yet. The, I do like the feathers. They're just not... Three hours later. Thing here. It's just not very stable either. At the risk of hurting myself any further, I'm going to go ahead and stop. Neither one of those did very good at the feather sticks. Alright, so neither one of those did very good with the uh, the feather stick. That was pretty, that was actually pretty bad. I'm at a very bad angle. I have a shitty ferro rod. And I'm not that experienced with that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to see if I can get a piece of uh, char cloth lit with either of these knives. And we will see how that goes. We're gonna start with the rat three. Excuse me. And actually I've never done this before with the uh, with the back of a knife, but we'll see how this goes. I'm going to tell you right now, unless you strip the coating off of the Rat 3, um, it's just not going to be good for, you know, being a good tool for making fire. I'm not going to waste any more energy on it. I can already tell you that this one's not going to be very successful. We're going to move on to the, uh, the Backpacker's buoy. Which is, may not be that good either because this is a very weird angle here. Let's see if this will even do it. I'm not even seeing any sparks. Well, 
Well, whoever wins this one is probably going to get eliminated in the next round, because I'm not going to lie, it's never been as difficult for me to get a fire going. Uh, but I don't think either one of these are a very good option in terms of fire. You're definitely going to need um, an alternate source to uh, actually produce the fire. They make feather sticks okay, um, but you know, what I should be seeing is something relative to that. And I'm barely doing that. Okay, so I, I don't think... Ooh, I don't, th I don't think either one of these are a very good option here. All right, so just gonna do a little bit of whittling here. Um, I'm gonna kind of do like a modified 10 stake. Obviously these aren't very round, uh, not a big deal, but we're just gonna do some, uh, just kind of see how well it actually moves some wood, which this one actually is doing pretty good. Just get a little bit rounded here. And then I'll put a bit of a point on it. Nothing too big. So if you use a little bit of force with the flat grind, I'm kind of noticing it does move a little bit of wood. But if, you, if you're if you trying to be delicate, the flat grind is not, uh, isn't, I don't know. Even though a lot of my knives are flat grinds, um, it doesn't seem to be processing wood very well if you're trying to be intricate with it. And even now, yeah, we try to get a point on this, is uh, putting a lot of force into this. And it just doesn't seem to want to move very well. There we go. Get in there. Putting a lot of effort into it, though. Call that good for that. And then if you wanted to put some sort of notch, I'm not going to put it where it's supposed to be. But if you wanted to put some sort of notch here, to uh, let's we'll do a number seven notch. This is what I'm talking about. If you're putting a whole lot of force without really regarding what you're doing, um, it's not that bad. But when you're being really intricate with it, it just doesn't seem to want to bite in the wood very well. Still pretty comfortable, but uh, I don't know if it's the width or the thickness of the blade itself. But uh, even at that, that's that's not that great of a, a number seven notch there. Uh, but that's the wrap three. We'll check out. We'll do the other end here with the backpackers buoy. And uh, yeah, I'll tell you what, I, I, did, I don't know how much of a difference there is between a saber grind and a full flat grind, but the saber grind, I mean, seems to be working better, a little bit easier anyway. Put a bit of a point on there. The backpacker's buoy is definitely more comfortable in the hand. and does just seem to be working a bit better. Call that good on the point. We'll see how it does with, uh, with making a notch. All right, so gonna, let me flatten this out, round this up a bit, make a little notch here. I can already see that that one bites better. In general, I can already tell if that's a better notch right out of the gate. Which is, you know, it's no big deal. It's not a, uh, I still like the, the Rat 3. I, I that's, I, you know, I EDC that a lot. Um, but that's obviously a better, better knife for uh, whittling, that's for sure. Uh, neither one got a fire going, you know. I mean, it is what it is. Salt, uh, really small, simple test. Uh, for this one though, I am going to give it to the backpackers buoy. That one's going to advance. Uh, 
just better in the field than the Rat 3, but I'll tell you right now, I don't think either one, I mean, I don't even think the, the Backpacker buoy is going to advance very far, so good stuff, man. Thank you guys for uh, checking this out. Sorry if it was kind of a rushed video. Sorry it's not outside. Backpacker's buoy wins round one.